Hey guys, what's going on? Doran Code here, coming to you with a tutorial. I know I haven't been uploading tutorials lately, so here's a tutorial for you guys. This one is on film score percussion, especially creepy horror film score percussion. Okay, I'm not going to cover the uh, harmonic elements in this. Um, I'm going to do that next tutorial when I uh, just go over the rest of this. But uh, yeah, let's focus on the percussion for now. Uh, I've got a couple of percussion elements and uh, they are down here as well. Let me just sort them so that we have everything nice and tidy. Okay, let's go from top to bottom. So first thing is a percussion loop that I have imported from a refill or a sample pack rather called um, Prime Loops Cinematic Impacts Volume 2 and it contains absolutely awesome percussion samples. Uh, the loop sounds like this. And to that uh, I added a stereo image and I'm using that as a high pass filter. As you can see I've got the solo high band on. because I don't want the low frequencies to get muddy when they conflict with each other. And then I've also added some reverb. And that makes the bass for the percussion, that's the classic rhythmic sound. Then something I quite like to do is a so-called mid-range percussion, as I call it. Um, let me just uh, show you what that sounds like. And that's actually a bit tricky. Um, let me just uh, deactivate all the effects patches here and show you the loop in its original form. I've also got some reverb on here. Um, it sounds like this. It's one of those electronic loops. Uh, they're in the factory sound bank called uh, in the electronic section. And what I did there was I activated a low pass filter in the uh, Dr. Octorex and um, gave that quite a bit of resonance and then I applied an LFO in the Dr. Octorex to the filter frequency which makes this slider move up and down. So this already sounds pretty cool but then I distorted it, I activated um, or I put a Scream 4 there with the overdrive algorithm and I Put the damage control really really high also the tone and presence uh, the tone control is really high and the presence control is really low and then i used the cut section to really bring out the mid-range which results which results in this sound then more distortion once again boosting the mids and cutting everything else and uh, that's tape full damage half compression half speed it sounds really unnatural and alien and uh, then I added some echo. Um, it's uh, it's a stereo echo with 48% uh, feedback and one eighth of a well, basically one eighth of a bar is time. And I set the right channel offset to 164th, so um, there's going to be a stereo um, effect. And then finally, I added some reverb. And that together with the percussion already sounds pretty cool. Okay, let's move on to the next track. Here I have recorded my clock, um, my wristwatch. And uh, basically, if I deactivate all the effects, it sounds like this. Sorry, should have put that on solo, my bad. Without any effects, it sounds like this. I think actually I didn't record my wristwatch in this one. Uh, yeah, right. With London Nabel and Fear My Thoughts, we recorded my wristwatch. I'm sorry. No, I, this is a this is a sample I downloaded off freesound.org, and um, it's uh, yeah, it's just some sort of clock. Sorry about that. And uh, what I did there was add some distortion, 
tape distortion is always i'm a big fan of tape saturation and um i cut the mids and boosted the highs because it's a percussive element then i added the scary verb preset in the rv7000 which works really well and then i um use the harsh effect to double this sound up so this is mono and this is with the widening house effect. Um, the way I set this up was basically, um, I connected the left output of the RV7000 to the left output of the um, audio channel, and then the right output I connected to a delay and had that with very, very low delay time, um, 13 milliseconds, and that just spreads this thing. Uh, if you Google the Haas effect, H-A-A-S, then you'll come across that technique and you can learn more about it. So yeah, that's the clock, together with a mid-range percussion. Okay, now let's start working on some Resident Evil type shit. What I have here is a sample, um, I don't even know where I got this, it's supposed to be of a slamming door. And uh, let's see if there's anything, any processing on there. Um, Oops, audio track two. No, seems empty, so no processing on there at all. It's just a sample of the slamming door that I found somewhere. And uh, that alone sounds pretty awesome if I layer those up. But uh, what I did here was I used a Kong and uh, loaded a sample in there. Now let me deactivate all the effects because that would um, ruin the suspense, so to speak. I loaded a kick drum and then I really distorted that. First of all, I used an EQ to boost the mids and cut the lows. Makes it sound like this. And then I used a tape distortion once again. No compression at all and very high damage. Now it sounds like this. Kind of like a hard style kick. And then I used an echo and reverb. And now if I layer those two on top. Very powerful sound. Um, and the last track I have here is, I think, another slamming door I found of free sound. Yeah, another slamming door, to which I also added some delay and reverb. Delay and reverb are very, very important, or very, very powerful um, elements when it comes to percussion. Now, if I take all these parts, except this one, We've got a pretty full percussion track. So yeah, I know this wasn't really a tutorial, it was merely me showing off this tune, but I hope you could pick up some techniques or some tips on how to get a big percussion track going. It's layering a lot of elements. I mean, here I have six tracks simply for the percussion. It's not just this single. I mean, this loop here sounds pretty pretty fat if you heard if you hear it first. But once you start adding other ele other elements, you can really hear how it becomes even bigger. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much what I consider to be pretty fat percussion. So yeah, um, the tips that I can give you in this video are just keep layering, keep distorting, keep using echo and delay, and check out Prime Loops for Cinematic Impacts Volumes 1 and 2. I only own Volume 2, um, but yeah, great, great sample pack for this kind of stuff. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video, and tune in next time when I'll be covering this bass patch.
Thanks for watching Don't Code Out.